Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page Channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows. Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, our postman Mel Blank, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. And as our special guest tonight, Harpo Marx. For your Thursday night enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. With extra flavor in the blend, because of choice Latin American coffee, skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup, because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. And the result is that today more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Well, this morning, we find the Burnses in their living room, where Gracie has just finished writing one of her daily newspaper columns. There. All done. And one of the best columns I've ever written. What's today's column about? All about my wonderful idea to solve inflation. What's your idea? Well, why not establish a board to control prices and not let them get too high? Uh, we have a board like that. It's called OPA. You mean someone stole my idea before yes, I even got it? around, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, darn. Uh, what did you say the board was called? OPA. How do you spell it? <laughs> OPA are initials. They stand for Office of Price Administration. My goodness. How did you find out all this stuff? There's a leak in Washington. <laughs> Oh, what I know a... Max Gordon. Dory. <laughs> I'll put this all in my column. Boy, I'd like to see Drew Pearson's face when it appears. Oh, yes. He'll be amazed. Oh, I'll say. He'll probably sit up all night and wear himself out working on the same idea. And then tomorrow morning, he'll read my column and there he'll be, pooped and scooped. <laughs> <laughs> Made a double act out of him, huh? Yeah. Uh... Gracie, let's stop this nonsense. You know absolutely nothing about national affairs. Oh, no. Well, you just ask me any question about national affairs, and I'll snap out an answer just like that. Okay. Who's the Speaker of the House? I don't know. Next question. <laughs> What's Secretary Schwalenbach's job? Never heard of him. Keep coming, brother. <laughs> That's enough. And you compare yourself to a man like Drew Pearson. Why, he knows everybody in Washington who has a job. So do I, and some Republicans, too. <laughs> You're a good mixer. A anyway, my column is different from Mr. Pearson's. He only writes political news, but I write all kinds, even Hollywood gossip. Hollywood gossip? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, listen, listen to this little tidbit from my tomorrow's column. I say, it is rumored about the Hollywood night spots that Clark Gable wears false ears. <laughs> Gable wears false ears? Now, I don't say he does. I only say that's the rumor. But where did the rumor come from? I started it. <laughs> I see. You can't print stuff like that. You have to stick to the truth. Who wants to read the truth? It's too dull. Oh, fine. And I take my second item. It says, is Margaret O'Brien really a 37-year-old woman? But she isn't. Do I say she is? I just ask. Murder. Uh, and here's my third item. Boris Karloff, Hollywood's leading horror man, has had his face lifted. In his next picture, he will play the part of Tom, the fun-loving rover boy. Gracie, you can be sued for libel. You just can't say Hi, things like... Well, what goes on here? Oh, I'm bawling Gracie out because of all the stuff she puts in the newspaper column. 
Tomorrow she was going to say that Hollywood's leading horror man had his face lifted. Really? They didn't do a very good job on you, George. Uh, look, a comic. Yeah, yeah. Gracie has been printing lies in her column, and I don't like it. I've always been honest. Well, sure you have. Why, when I was a when I was a little kid, I picked Lincoln as my hero because he was called Honest Abe. I copied him. I followed him. You voted for I him. Vo- <laughs> oh, what's the use? Only kidding, George. You know, Gracie shouldn't use those phony gossip items. What she needs is a fellow to snoop around and dig up stories that actually happened. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Would you like to take the job, Bill? Well, no, Gracie, I wouldn't have time, but I will give you a hot flash to use in your column tomorrow. A juicy bit of scandal. What is it? Well, you can say that the handsomest young actor in Hollywood kissed a married woman while her husband just stood there with a stupid look on his face. Oh, really? When did that happen? Just now. So long. <laughs> Someday I'll punch that guy right in his dimple. Oh, don't be happy. Bill's plan will solve everything. I'll get somebody to spy on the stars and tell me what they see. But who'll you get? Oh, why don't you do it, George? A job like that would be a nice change from, uh, from, well... Whatever it is you do. You mean give up my pickle straw? (laughs) Me spy on people, oh no. Oh, please, dear. Nothing doing. I'd have to follow Betty Grable around. I'd have to peek into Lana Turner's window and hide under Rita Hayworth's... Say, that wouldn't be a... Jaw. Okay. (laughs) Come in. Good morning, all. Good morning, all. Meredith, you may be the very man I'm looking for. I need someone to collect gossip for my column. Then I'm your man, Gracie. Back in my hometown of Mason City, Iowa, I used to do a gossip program on the radio. Called it uh, Inside Mason City with Scoop Wilson. (laughs) Good thing it wasn't Don Wilson. You couldn't get Inside Mason City with Don Wilson. (laughs) Meredith, what sort of items did you do? Well, uh, I'd usually open with a shocker to get their attention. Something like, Flash, what Holstein is holding hoofs with what popular bull? <laughs> that was the shocker that got their attention. Yes. Then I'd broadcast news of special interest to the Iowa farmers. The uh, progress of the fight against the corn borer. The latest news... What's a corn borer, Meredith? Well, that's just what the name implies, Gracie. A pest who loves corn and who loves to bore. They call it the corn borer. I thought they called you Scoop Wilson. <laughs> sure. Well, it's a little joke, yes. Well, I'll see you two geniuses later. This conversation upsets me. Uh, do you think I might qualify as your snooping reporter, Gracie? No, I'm afraid not, Meredith. No. I need someone who can sneak right into people's homes and spy on them. Oh. See. I saw a thrilling spy picture called Night in Casablanca. Maybe you could hire someone from the cast. Were there any exotic, seductive spies in the picture? Oh, yes. There was one very attractive blonde spy. His name was uh, Harpo Marx. Harpo Marx? Yeah. In Night in Casablanca, all of the Marx brothers are spies. It was a thrilling picture. I was glued to my seat for two hours. Glued to your seat? Well, wasn't it embarrassing when you got up and your pants didn't? (laughs) By the ex- expression glued to my seat, I uh, simply meant I couldn't leave. <laughs> I, uh, all of Crosby's horses couldn't have pulled me away. Well, some glue is stronger than others. <laughs> Meredith, you've given me a wonderful idea. I have? Mm, I'll go over to the Moss Brothers' house and hire one of them as my snooping reporter. Which one will you get, Gracie? Well, either Groucho or Chico. Harpo doesn't talk. That's right. He's the dumb one. All he does is chase beautiful women. Yeah, well, he's not so dumb. <laughs> See you later, Meredith. <laughs> I hope the Marx Brothers are home. Oh, it's Harpo. How, how do you do, Harpo? I'm Mrs. George Burns. Oh, thank you. You think I'm pretty, huh? 
My uh, figure does things to you. Uh, you just can't take your eyes off my face. Mm-hmm. I'm young and alluring and irresistible siren. Um, I fascinate you. Oh, you little devil, what a line you've got. <laughs> um, tell me, um, where are your brothers, Groucho and Chico? Oh, oh, I see, playing cards. What are they playing, poker? Uh, bridge? No. Well, what are they playing? Oh. Oh, Jim. <laughs> you know, I can understand you just fine. How would you like to be my snooping reporter and go around and spy on people? Oh, wonderful. Now you can come to my house and go <laughs> On Mobile Bay, it's Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. to me that tune you're playing is a real old timer. Oh, yes, it is, Bill. It's called On Mobile Bay and was composed back in 1910. Really? And by the way, have you ever sailed down the great shipping bay? No, Meredith, but many's the time I've walked along the weather grade wharves. And what a sight it is to see all the different steamships and freighters from far-flung ports. Why, they hail from Europe, the Windward Islands, the Caribbean, New Zealand, Hawaii, and from many other corners of the world. And then there's all the hustle and drama of men and cargo booms landing the exotic freight. Mahogany logs, sandalwood, spices, and tropical fruits and barks. Mobile Bay is certainly a unique and colorful part of our American scene. And you know, I can't help thinking, too, how it's no wonder that Maxwell House coffee has become so much a part of the American scene. For this nation of coffee lovers have enjoyed the richly mellow flavor of Maxwell House for generations. And today it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee. There's good reason, too, for Maxwell House is a skillful blend of these choice Latin American coffees, each chosen for its own special contribution. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for bigger... And Bucaramanga's for full body. The result is a blend so flavorful, so satisfying, that North, East, South, and West, coffee lovers agree Maxwell House is downright good. Good to the last drop. Serious, Gracie. You hide Hop or Marks as your snooping reporter? Well, sure. Well, what good is he? He doesn't talk. But he honks. So does a goose, and, and that you can eat. <laughs> you better get rid of him. Well, I, I've got him out working on all kinds of scoops right now. For instance, wouldn't it be wonderful if he could uh, get the inside story of how Mickey Rooney kisses his wife goodbye? Huh? Well, maybe he can find out the name of the fellow who boosts him up. <laughs> 
Uh, I see what you mean. Oh, there's Hoppo. What do you bet he's got a wonderful scoop? Come in. Hello, Harpo. Oh, I'd like you to meet my husband, George. And beep beep to you. Uh, did you uh, bring me the scoop, Harpo? Good, let's have it. Oh, no, not a cold scoop. Smart as a whip, this kid. Harpo, let me explain to you what a scoop is. For instance, if you knew a story about one of Hollywood's great lovers that no one else knew, that would be a scoop. Oh, you mean you've got such a story? Oh, wonderful. Who's the great lover? Clark Gable? No, huh? Errol Flynn? Not him either. Jerome Power? Well, who is it then? <laughs> oh, no. Spring is here. Now, George, this might be a very interesting story. Tell me about it, Harpo. I suppose there's a girl involved. Oh, well, I don't know if that's three plain ones or one knockout. Oh, one knockout. Then you uh, have a rival, I suppose. Oh, I thought so. What sort of a fella is he? He doesn't like a villain. No, he sounds like a cat. Now, when did all this take place, Harpo? Oh, yeah, I see. Saturday night. <laughs> now, exactly what happened on Saturday night? Oh, you called on your girl. Uh, were her mother and father home? Oh, just a mother. <laughs> this is the greatest story since Lost Weekend. <laughs> Well, what happened next, Hoppo? Did you take your girl over to the sofa? Uh-huh. And then what? Oh, I see. Well, how do you feel when you kiss your girl, Hoppo? Someone at the door, maybe? Uh-huh. Who was it? Not the two but we got it in. <laughs> the rival, huh? And what did he want? Oh, same thing you wanted. Well, did he take your girl away from you? Oh, poor Hoppo. Did you find someone else to neck with? Oh, yeah? Who was she? <laughs> You had to take her mother. Well, I guess the young girls don't go for you. The Bobby Sock is like a different type of man. He's, uh, he's, he's rattling bones. Well, that's who they like, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> well, you see, Harpo, it's too bad that you can't serenade the girls like Frankie Boy does. Ooh, that's right. You have your harp. Oh, show us how you woo the girls with that.
I was wonderful, but I still need a scoop for my column. Something exciting like a robbery. Find out who held up Hedy Lamar and Dorothy Lamore. And find out who held up W.C. Fields. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he was held up. You don't think he can stand alone, do you? <laughs> oh, George, this is a serious assignment. Uh, get going, Hoppo. Uh, get me a big scoop on a robbery. Gracie, that guy's a complete jerk. He is not. He's a brilliant man, and he has a brilliant future. Brilliant future? Yes. He can't talk. I know. Wouldn't he make a wonderful congressman? <laughs> want a reporter. Get rid of Hoppo and get yourself someone intelligent. Come in. Good afternoon, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> and Mr. Burns. Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Hello, Mr. Postman. Did I interrupt the family tete a <laughs> I was just telling my wife she ought to get a new helper. The one she's got is a complete jerk. But she loves you, Mr. Burns. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Postman, the helper George referred to is that famous fellow who's always chasing girls. And he wears a blonde curly wig. Oh, Bill Goodwin. <laughs> yeah, that's close enough. If you two will excuse me, I'll see you later. Well, you still, still didn't guess who my helper is, Mr. Postman. It's Harpo Marks. He's my snooping reporter. Oh, I see. How would you like to help him snoop? As a postman, you visit all the celebrities' homes. I'm sorry, Mrs. Burns, but postal regulations forbid a letter carrier to use his position or equipment for personal gain. <laughs> I can't even blow my postman's whistle at a girl. Oh, really? <laughs> That's right. I did it once and got 17 years at hard labor. Oh, just for blowing your whistle at a girl? Yes. I later married her. <laughs> well, I... Yes, you can't help me then. No, but here comes Mr. Goodwin. Perhaps he can suggest someone. Yeah, I'll ask him. Hello, Bill. Hi, Gracie. Good afternoon, Mr. Goodwin. Good afternoon, Mr. Post. <laughs> Bill, I hired Harpo Marks as my snooping reporter, but George doesn't think he's so good. Really? Well, why'd you hire Harpo? Well, he's a spy in the Marx Brothers' new picture, Night in Casablanca. Oh, well, yes, I saw the picture last night, Gracie. What a love scene with Carol Davis. Wow. Oh, no, Bill. The girl in the picture was Lois Collier. Well, yeah, but I was in the balcony with Carol Davis. <laughs> oh, Mr. Goodwin. Wait, Mr. I envy you your gay, romantic life. You do? I do. <laughs> Always a different girl. Once you marry one, the glamour is gone. Really, Mr. Postman? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, <laughs> what a mess at night. Wrinkle cream, foundation cream, chin strap, curlers. Oh, but Bill wouldn't give that up just because he got married. <laughs> Gracie, I'll have you know I employ no such devices to enhance my charm. All I use is a few drops of a tantalizing scent that women can't resist. Oh, so that's the secret of your appeal. Well, yes. Behind each ear, I put a wee drop of Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> Maxwell House coffee? Well, Mr. Postman, can you think of anything that has a more delightful fragrance, a more inviting aroma? Maxwell House is appetizing, rich, full-bodied, and mellow coffee at its full-flavored best. Good to the last drop. Well, we finally found out what happens to that last drop. <laughs> Bill puts it behind his ear. Why don't you try it, Mr. Postman? Maxwell House has a universal appeal. As a matter of fact, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Really? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'll bet if you try my little trick, Mr. Postman, your wife will grab you in her arms and kiss you. What a horrible thought. <laughs> oh, Mr. Postman, if your wife is like you say... How did she ever get you to propose to her? Oh, she turned my head. Oh, flattery, huh? No, she just took my head in her hands and turned it to her. <laughs> well, goodbye, folks. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Oh, good, that's Harper with my scoop. Come in. 
Hello, Harpo. The sunset bus is back. <laughs> well, Harpo, did you get a story about a robbery? <whistles> Wonderful. Harpo, I want to apologize. Let me shake your hand. Uh, what did the robber steal? Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. The piece of silverware just fell out of a sleeve. He must be the robber. Oh, no, not Harpo. He probably just had lunch at the Brown Derby and picked up a souvenir. <laughs> he had breakfast and dinner there, too. <laughs> a fine man, you hired, Grace. He's nothing but a crook. A no good Oh, feeding? now, don't get so excited, George. Calm down. I'll go in the kitchen and get you a glass of water. Harpo Marks. Shame on you. Breaking the law for three lousy knives. <laughs> For five lousy knives. <laughs> For six lousy. kitchen sink. <laughs> that too, huh? I feel sorry for the poor sucker you stole this all from. Oh, George, I couldn't get you a glass of water. Someone stole our kitchen sink. Alfred, <laughs> you mean I'm the guy you robbed? <laughs> you robbed the fat? <laughs> you robbed the fat? <laughs> you robbed... Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Oh, goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's only more spoon. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just as jello, jello six delicious locked in flavors can't be beaten. So the proof of jello pudding's in the evening. <laughs> The Jell-O twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just a taste of Jell-O pudding or a Jell-O and you know, it's the one and only J-E-L-L-O. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Tracy Allen, Meredith Wilson, and Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Stay tuned to this station because Bird's Eye Open House, starring Dennis Shaw, is coming on in just a second. Dennis' special guest tonight is Peter Lawrence. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.